evening, we just want to look at the benefit of coming to church. It's a study, and we'll be touching some areas that I strongly believe that is going to be a blessing to us. The benefit of coming to church. What is it that is located in church? Why do we come to church? What is it in church? Every Sunday we gather, every Thursday we gather for Bible study. What is there? Why do we come to church? Some of you, you grew up in a family where they talk about church a lot. But you don't understand what is located, what is the benefit of coming to this church. To church. You know, some of us come to church on the religious basis. So that it will look as if we are not Christians. But coming to church is beyond that. And when the purpose of a thing is not understood, it's not clear, abuse is inevitable. What is church? First of all, we must understand that church is called, in the scriptures, it's called Zion. Another name for church is Zion. Another name for church is called the Ecclesia. They call that ones. You know, the Bible says they go from strength to strength, every one of them that appear before God in Zion. In where? In Zion. I want us to take our scripture. A scripture text from the book of Joshua chapter 21 verse 13. Joshua chapter 21 verse 13. Thank you Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Holy Ghost we ask that you take charge of this meeting fully in Jesus name. Joshua chapter 21 verse 13. I read it said. Thou they give to the children of Aaron the priest. Hebron with us suburbs to be a city of refuge for the slayer and what's that? With what? Good. Now I want us to you're going to walk with me media. Open to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. Hebrews chapter 12 Verse 22. Let's read together. But ye have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and unto an immunable company of what? Angels. Verse 23. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. Made what? Now that talks about the church. If you go back to verse 22, go back to verse 22. It says, But ye are come unto man what? I didn't hear the unto man what? Zion. And unto the city of the living God. I said to us that another name for church is Mount what? Is Mount what? Zion. Mount Zion. That is when we are coming to church, we are coming to the city of refuge. Am I right? Now, do you say I'm going for service? Because when you come to church, your inner man is serviced. Your mental mind is serviced. I have said it before, and let me say it again. When the devil wants to strike a man, what the devil does is that he keeps you away from church. I'm telling you the truth. Now listen to this. In animals' education, when the shepherd is keeping the sheep, and a lion wants to pick one of the sheep, the lion does not go for the crowd of sheep. Because they can finish that lion. The lion target the one that have strolled away. And bounce on that one. Now, because you have strolled away, the eye of the shepherd is not there. Now, every church has two shepherds. How many shepherds? We have the chief shepherd and we have the under shepherd. Jesus is the chief shepherd. That shepherd everybody in the church, including pastor. Now, the under shepherd is the pastor. That is, it is in the interest of Jesus that you should be saved. 
Do you understand what I'm saying now? And there is Jesus sees you as part of the family. Once you throw away, you have strolled out of his covering. Sometimes when you stroll away, the devil will make you feel that you are even doing well. He will tell you, you are doing well. He will not be giving you fully scriptures to validate your stupidity so that I can strike you. God is everywhere. God is everywhere, but God is more in his house. Huh? You know, there are some people you want to discuss with, they tell you, meet me in my house, come to the house. This matter, we can't talk about it here. This is an occasion. Let's see our home. Uh, just come. Come on Sunday after church. They'll open the gate for you. Don't worry. God is everywhere, but God is more everywhere. In his house. That is, church is a service station. Where your soul, your spirit, your body is serviced. You don't need to know it. You don't need to. See, church is not an environment of feeling. Mm-mm. There are a lot of people that would have died before their time. That they never knew that their rescue came when they came for one service. Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying now? Your body is serviced. Your mind is serviced. That's why when you are joking with church, you are joking with your life. Joking with service, you are joking with your life. That is another blessing of coming to church is what we call service. Now listen to this. Let me tell you this. For those that has cars, when your car is not functioning well, what you do is that you service the car. Am I right? Huh? Uh, no, talk to me. Am I right? Now, you don't, you don't, you take your car to service station. You take it where? I didn't hear that. You take it where? To be serviced. Now, after the car is properly serviced, the car can move everywhere. It can switch gear. You can't, you can't drive a car that is not properly serviced to Lagos. You will break down. Every time you come to church on Thursday, you service your mind. You service your spirit. Every time you come to church on Sunday, you are serviced also. You think people are fools when they said, I'm going to service. No. And the service is in different dimension. When you are worshipping, what you are doing, you are draining the oil out. From the car, you are draining the oil. Father, dance, you are draining. When you are praying, you are refilling. Even though the prayer is five minutes, even though once prayer, just a prayer, you are putting in new oil. And you need new oil to move well. Some people, you need not just one service, you need many services. Because your oil has dried. That's why you can think all those stupid thoughts. Hello? See, you can't even, see, you can't even picture God anymore. You don't know what to eat and what not to eat. Anything. Blah, 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 blah. You eat tight. You eat everything. You eat because your spirit man is not alive. You see there? He said, I, I will. That is, is the one that gives it, him to you. Give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge sir, and understanding. Let's read verse 16. And it shall come to pass. Now, after you are fed with knowledge and with understanding, and I said, and it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increase where? Yeah, in the land. That is, there cannot be increase and multiplication, multiplication without proper feeding. With a proper what? And do you know how that works? As you are growing, you begin to grow others. Did you hear what I said? See, the sign that you are a responsible child of God in this house is that you have other people you are discipling. Look at me, everyone. You see the way I'm teaching you now. I'm sweating teaching you. Now, you now look for people you begin to disciple in the church because it's not everybody that is in the same capacity. And that is how multiplication and growth comes in. You have grown, you begin to grow others. That was why he spoke to Timothy. He said, my son Timothy, the things I commit to you, look for faithful men that you will entrust them into his hand, their hand, that will be able to teach others. 
That is the proof that you are faithful in the house is that you are teaching others to come up to. Not that you are scattering others. Not that you are discouraging others. Not that you are telling others that they are not spiritual. Not that you are telling others that they are dragging you back. No. And God will cause a faithful man to increase. One of the key to God's own blessing is faithfulness. Is what? I didn't hear that. Is what? It's faithfulness. And the proof that you are faithful is that you look for a new member. You begin to educate him. You begin to educate her. You look for a young member. You put her in service unit. But this one, all the things I teach you, consume them without communicating to others. You are not faithful. You are not faithful. That is, in church, you get spiritual revelation. You receive spiritual understanding. Your understanding blossoms. Your understanding becomes, becomes real. You begin to know things that you can't know normally, naturally. Somebody's understanding will come alive. Amen. I thought you say better, amen. amen. And your success in life can be determined by the level of your spiritual understanding. Your spiritual understanding will just come alive. In church. Fourthly, what is in church? Rest is in church. Rest is in where? Is in church. You can't be in church and be troubled. Rest. Rest, divine rest. Some of you are bothered over nonsense things. Once you come to church, your spirit is lightened. Is what? Lightened and refreshed. Lightened and refreshed. We'll take some scriptures for that. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Quickly. Matthew eleven twenty eight to twenty nine. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now let's read together. One to go. Come unto me, all ye that what, and what, and heavy lady, and I will give you where. When he say, come unto me, where will you come to him? In where? He say, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. In our promise, he said, I will give you what? Rest. He, he, he vowed that he will give it to you. That is when you are coming to church, have the Lord, I'm coming again. I'm coming to you. You are the one that said I should come. Do you know why a lot of people don't receive things when they come to church? They don't come to church with consciousness. They come to church as if they are going to a club. They come to church as if they are going to event center. They come to church as if they are going to shop right. That's why somebody will be more conscious of the clothes he's wearing than their the presence. He said, come unto me. And I, God, will give you rest. That is, rest is obtained in his presence. In his what? Rest. Rest from trouble. Rest from sickness. Rest from infirmities. Rest from anything you can't explain. Somebody shout church. Say louder. Say like a Christian. Say like a Christian. Lastly, church is the best place of saviors. <laughs> Psalm 87, 1 to 8. Azar chapter, let's read Azar chapter 2 verse 3 first. Azar chapter 2 verse 3. Let's read together. Azar chapter 2 verse 3. After that we read Psalm 87 verse 1 to 8. Let's read together. And many people shall go, what? And say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Now listen. The word law talks about authority. And the word of the law from Jerusalem. He said there will, there will be people telling them let's go. You see you don't even like church. That's why you can't tell people let's go. That talks about soul winning. Every genuine lover of church will love soul winning. It says some people will say, let us go 
to the house of God. So he will teach us his ways. He said, Out of Zion shall proceed the law. That talks about men of influence. Men of what? Men of influence. Men of influence. That is, giants are born in church. Church is the birthplace of saviors. Church is the birthplace of giants. Agradina Sabalai. Church is the birthplace of redeemers. Of what? Redeemers. <laughs> you know who are redeemers? You are the redeemers. You were redeemed. Church. Church is the birthplace of giants. Your potentials cannot make, be made manifest or cannot manifest until you become a church person. Every church man is always a great man.